different tonight. I'm still going to kind of go check on the animals and see what they're doing, but we're going to do a video mostly on like one specific animal. So tonight, I think we're going to do a video on Daisy because Daisy was the first animal after Duke that came to the farm that's still on the farm. And so we're going to do a video all about Daisy and how she came to live on the farm. And I'm going to put some pictures of when she was a little bitty goat. Pork's looking at me like, what's going on, man? Did you bring me some food? No. No food. Hey, buddy. Where's Toonie? Is she with her cow friend? Do you not see small friend out here? I don't see any of the goats either, so they may be down here in the chute. She's pretty adventurous if she's gone all the way out there. Since it's been so hot, he hasn't really gone far. He's basically stayed right in here by the pool, which there's plenty of grass to eat. There's no reason. She may be so far out in the chute. It may be hard to find her. It's time to pick some tomatoes again tonight. Lots of tomatoes. Let's see. It worries me a little bit. Her being way out here. She's so tiny. I'm afraid she might end up through the fence. Check on our apples while we're down here. Oh, it's Thursday. It's the second week of school that the kids have been back, and it's been a long week. It usually is. The kids are really tired. You can just tell it's starting this whole like go to school for an entire week thing. I'm starting to get to I'm starting to get to all the adults too. Oh yeah. All our pretty apples. And it's a little bit rotten. I don't know what these are supposed to look like when they're ripe. I guess they're green? I don't know. They're kind of weird. So are these over here. Gobbles, is Toonie down here with you? I don't remember what they looked like last year. Here these guys, they don't get very much attention. They're, yes. <laughs> Here she is. Wish I had zoom on this. That was better. But she's with her mom. Right with gobbles. Hi, Bean. Are you coming? Hi, Tooney. She's so tiny, bless her heart. Hi, Gobbles, are you taking care of her? Like, we can't even see you. There's so much grass. There's so much grass. Where are you even, pig? There you are. Hi. I didn't bring anything to eat. Don't bite me. Don't bite me. All right. Just make sure to bring her back, okay? She's not big like you. She can't live out here. I have to go pig. Sorry, it's having a hard time focusing because the fence. Yeah. It's good to me. 
the reason that this kind of freaks me out, hi princess, is they can go all the way down there and there's a, like a wire gate down here at the end that would stop them. But she could end up over here in this horse pasture that we don't own this, um, where like you can see this kind of steel fence starts with kind of keeps the goat fence a little bit more rigid. But I suppose as long as she's hanging out with gobbles, she'll be okay. Gobbles will take care of her. Hi, princess. You boys smell. Oh man, the wind is blowing. And these friends stink. Yeah, you do. All right, Piggle. Mom will leave you here with your cows. Where did you go? Pig. Toonie. <laughs> She's buried so far in the grass that I can't, like, I don't know if you can even see her. That's a pig in there. All right. See you later, friends.
do you think, pretty girl? You got you some graphs. Oh, did Pixie take it from you? Pixie. So this is Daisy. Daisy was my very first goat that I ever brought home. I have the long tripod. This is going to be a little shaky because, you know, they're goats. Um, I got her when she was five weeks old. She was still on a bottle. She was not as tiny as the Nigerian. It's like, she was bigger than Tank. She was probably patty size at five weeks old. And she came with her brother, Marvin, who was a weather. And we got them... We moved into this place in November of 2014, and I bought them in March of 2015. Come here, hooligans. And she came home, we went to Springfield and picked her up, transported her in the back of the truck in the dog kennel. Didn't we? Yes. I think we actually brought her home in this dog kennel, wrapped in a tarp. I think I have a picture, I'll show you. And I bottle fed her and Marvin until they were about 10 weeks old. So that's why she's pretty attached to me and she's so friendly and she wants to be with me all the time is because I was her mom. Not that the rest of these dudes are not friendly. Um, she is a Nubian goat. When we first got started, we were debating between Nubians and Nigerians, and then we got Twizzy and a buddy from her farm named Midnight, who was a mini Nubian. So she was a cross between Nigerians and Nubians, just to kind of see what we liked. We'd never done goats, so weren't totally sure what we wanted. The reason that we chose Nubians and Nigerians is butterfat content. So Nubians and Nigerians have really great tasting milk. It has high butterfat, which means it's good for making cheese and any other kind of dairy products that you would want. Twist. Y'all <laughs> are so nuts. And any other kind of dairy product. So yogurt or ice cream. It's a really heavy body fat content. And Nubians are supposed to be kind of the Jersey cow of goats. And that they're supposed to have really high production rates. So they're full size goats. So they're going to produce a lot of milk. We've only bred Daisy successfully once. When she was two years old. And she had a little doe named Violet. And... You guys are so crazy. Um, I'm being kicked. Stop it. And it almost killed her, to be honest. That first baby, she got an infection. We almost lost her. I seriously thought she was going to die. But after a few weeks of lots of antibiotics and really good goat care and talking with the vet. She got better and it was really funny. She realized about when Violet was about three weeks old that she wasn't nursing and she started to panic and she was screaming pretty much all the time at me because Violet wasn't so once Violet started nursing, she calmed down, and she was a great mom. She took really good care of Violet once she was healthy. Um, we actually lost Violet last year to really severe bout of parasites, and so we've changed a lot of our setup because of that. She produced, Daisy gave me almost a gallon of milk a day on her first brushing. So she is a wonderful milker. She's super easy to milk. Um, she stand trained just immediately. She was awesome. Probably the easiest goat that I've stand trained. Just the best personality. Very relaxed. Not really concerned about anything. Oh, then poppers. Of course, Poppy's her granddaughter. 
We're hoping, since even though Poppy's very small, to get high production out of her because of the little bit of Nubian that she has in her. The weather is cooler, and these guys are just absolutely wild. And it's about to be breeding season, so we're all in heat, too. Um, what else about Miss Daisy? Daisy loves to escape. She loves to eat peach trees. She loves the leaves and the branches, and she's tall, so she's learned to stand up on her back legs. None of the other girls do that. They will prop up on the fence on their back legs, but I do not have another goat that dances around on her back legs to eat tree branches like this girl. She loves some leaves and some trees and fruit trees especially. She has a very funny personality. She has almost a human-like scream. She was probably six months old, and our neighbor called and said, your goat is standing on top. We had this big goat fort, and she's screaming, and I thought she was hurt or sick or something was after her. No. She was just yelling, because that's what Daisy does. After she had Violet, she calmed down a lot. I don't know if the fever kind of changed her brain. Or just motherhood calmed her down. It does seem to be that way that once these girls are older and they've kitted, they kind of settle a little bit. They're not as vocal. Um, I'm hoping to breed her again this year. Haven't really decided if we'll do a full-blooded Nubian or if we'll do just breed her back to a Nigerian again just to have her easier kitting. She's four years old. So hopefully she'll, she's kind of shy and I have to have a pretty determined buck to breed her. But she's just a sweet, derpy goat, gets into trouble. She's definitely the herd queen, so she bosses everybody around between her and Zelda. Everybody knows where they stand on the totem pole, so... Hope you've enjoyed this kind of flashback to look at Daisy baby pictures and to learn a little bit about our goats. We'll probably do a clip on Twiz the next time we do one of these because she was the next goat that came to the farm. We ultimately decided that we weren't going to stick with Nubians. She's just had so many more health problems than the Nigerians and after talking to several breeders in our area who've done Nubians and done Nigerians. The Nigerians just seem to be hard, hardier and do better here in our climate with our parasites than the Nubians. The Nubians just seem to be really hard to keep healthy. And so we ultimately just decided the Nigerians. Plus, we don't really need that much milk. So if I was going to milk her, I wouldn't milk anyone else. So then... I don't really need a gallon of milk a day. A half gallon is more than we need. But it does at least make worth coming out to the barn and milking worth the time. So that's all about my daisy goat. She's still a favorite. She may always be yard art, as we like to say. Just pretty. She just hangs out. If she doesn't ever breed again, it won't hurt my feelings. But it would be nice. She's such a nice milker. She's a beautiful udder. Really nice milk goat overall. Alright guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me this evening on the farm and feeding the pig and checking on Petunia and doing all those fun things that I do every night. Hope you enjoyed our little segment on Daisy and how she first came to the farm. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you want to leave me a comment about what you liked about the video or what kind of videos you would like to see, do that down below. Hit the subscribe button and ring the little notification bell to make sure that you know every time I put out a new video. If you're new to YouTube and you don't know what any of that means, if you have a Google account, you can do all of those things as long as you're logged in when you're on YouTube. So there's a button right below the video that says subscribe. If you hit that, that means that my videos will automatically save to your YouTube account. If you hit the little bell that's by the subscribe button, it'll send you an email notification or a notification to your phone every time I put out a video. So like as soon as the video goes live, 
you'll get notified. Subscribers help my channel. It helps YouTube promote my channel more so that other people can see it. And likes and comments also do that. So it helps me a lot if you guys would subscribe, like the videos, and hit the little notification bell. I hope you guys have a good night, and I'll see you tomorrow.